Tesla CEO and cryptocurrency lover Elon Musk has been known to say some pretty weird things. And really, that is nothing new. I mean, he's called the techno king for a reason. But lately, Elon Musk has been going beyond weird and has been saying some pretty interesting things. I saw a headline on CNBC the other day and I want to give my reaction to what Elon Musk is saying now. Because in essence, Elon Musk is now saying that if the world doesn't have more children, our civilization is going to collapse. And I have a few thoughts about this. So I wanted to take a minute to react to what CNBC had to say about Elon Musk's thoughts and just what he means by civilization crumbling if we don't continue to have kids. But before I get into all of that, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News, and if you like this video, then smash that thumbs up button below and hit that notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world, and we can keep making videos just like this one. Basically, Elon Musk and this article are talking a lot about how birth rates are declining throughout the United States and the rest of the world, and what this could mean for the global economy. Now, there's typically two different camps when you talk about birth rates. And of course, they are completely opposite, so I'll cover them separately here. On one hand, you have the camp that says the world does not need any more children, and you have the complete opposite side that says the world desperately needs more people. So here is kind of the argument for someone to say that the world has way too many people right now. Essentially, there is not enough resources on the planet for every single person, and it may be contributing to poverty and low socioeconomic status. As a nation and as a planet, we continue to build more things. However, we only have so much food, and we only have so much land for people to live on, and as we have more people, that is going to get a lot harder for people to buy. What that ultimately does is raise the demand for just about everything in our world. And as we can see, that can be a huge problem. When the pandemic first started back in March of 2020, the world was kind of running into an issue. People stopped working because industries were closing down. Nobody really knew how long these industries were going to close down for. And what that ultimately led to was massive supply chain issues, and for a couple of different reasons. For one, the Federal Reserve decided that the United States needed around three to five trillion dollars in economic stimulus. The reason for this is because nobody knew what was going to happen, and we didn't know if people were going to be out of work for a long time. If people are out of work, nobody is going to get paid. That means people won't get paid and businesses will not get paid because nobody is out buying anything. So the Federal Reserve decided that we needed this economic stimulus in order to lift the economy and our civilization out of the pandemic. And don't get me wrong, this helped millions upon millions of people throughout the entire country. However, it also created massive inflation and huge supply chain issues. As people were getting all of this money, whether it be unemployment assistance or federal stimulus checks, they went out and spent a lot of this money. Now, to be fair, a good portion of Americans did end up saving this money. We saw saving rates go up in 2020, and even in parts of 2021, people started to save a lot more money. And we'll talk about that in just a second. People also went out and invested this money. We saw the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Dow indexes on Wall Street hit new record highs. Because for some people, this was additional money that they really didn't need. So they went out and spent this money. So they invested it, or they went out and bought things that they either needed or didn't need. The bottom line here is, people went out and spent this money. Around 50% of all of the stimulus checks that were sent out were spent within a week. Because people were buying more things and consuming more, now we have supply chain issues. And that didn't help inflation because as demand for just about everything went way up, our supply didn't really increase because for one, industries were shut down. And for two, our supply chain issue was already squeezed really tightly even before the pandemic. Shipping times and the cost of delivery was already going up and now it's getting even more expensive. And that's where we get back to Elon Musk's comments about world population. As more people are born, that takes away more resources, and there's only so many resources to go around. 
The fact of the matter is, shipping can only get so fast, and delivery can only get so fast, and we only have so many finite resources to actually make goods on the planet. The United States and the rest of the world is moving towards electric vehicles. However, it is not a 100% guarantee that that is going to happen by a certain point. A lot of the major automakers have pledged to get this done sometime in the 2030s. However, there is no guarantee that that will happen and we may continue to use gasoline and fossil fuels for much longer than that. Simply put, even if we do switch to all electric models, we're still going to need to consume a ton of energy. Electricity is made with some solar energy, some wind energy, but not the vast majority of it. The vast majority of it is created with fossil fuels. Coal needs to be burned, and you still have a need for natural gas throughout the United States. More people being born takes away from that, and that's just the resources that the planet has. Now, when it comes to actual fiscal policy, the more people that are born, the more likely that people are going to need more money. As your population increases, you're going to have one of two things. You're either going to have a lot of people who are employed because people People are creating new jobs or you're going to have a population that can't find jobs. And this is a pretty deep issue because with the way our society is going, we're going to have a lot of jobs that are eliminated in society. So a lot of these jobs where people are doing remedial tasks may end up disappearing within the next two decades. Which means the need for specialization and training is going to be very important. Same with creativity and these skills that a lot of people haven't needed really up to this point. I mean, back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you could get a job in one of these traditional fields and make a really good living. However, nowadays, those fields are heavily saturated, and day by day, automation is taking over. Which means people are going to need more access to all of this training. So whether that be college or whether it be the internet so people can learn on places like YouTube, people are going to need access to the internet. Now we're starting to see the government and private enterprises come out with better ways to bring the internet to people all throughout the world. The infrastructure bill that was recently passed by President Joe Biden has parts in it that bring broadband internet service to places where internet hasn't been readily accessible in the country. And that is an awesome first step. However, if jobs and if our monetary supply does not equal the amount of people in our country or on our planet, you're going to start seeing low incomes and poverty hit the world. This can have grave economic effects for our entire economy, because if people have less access to money, then they're not going to spend as much money either. The only thing that they're going to buy is things that they absolutely need. And that's not even mentioning the cultural significance that this would have on our nation and our planet. So the overall argument here is that the Earth is only so big and there's only so much room on it for jobs and money and resources for new people to take. So from that perspective, having less people on the planet could be a good thing. However, if birth rates continue to drop forever, eventually humans will become extinct. I mean, if we just continue to have less kids and less kids until we are actually having negative birth rates, meaning people are dying faster than we're reproducing, then you will have less people on the planet overall. And that's where we enter Elon Musk and his argument for why the world needs more people and if we don't have more people, civilization is going to crumble. Basically the argument on the other side is that we need more people. And the bottom line here is that the more people that you have, the more thinkers and the more brains you can have on the planet. Brains equal innovation. And the less people you have, the less collaboration and innovation you can have. Without collaboration and innovation, nothing really gets done. Everything pretty much remains exactly the same. That is part of the reason why our planet has exploded in technological advancements over the last hundred years. We have been seeing way more people and with way more people means you have a problem to solve. 
And these can be problems ranging from any sort of issue that you can think of. It could be problems with technology. It could be problems with labor, or it could be problems with our government. Whatever the problem is, there needs to be someone else that can think through that problem and actually get it solved. However, when you have fewer people, your problem solving capabilities start to go down. And that is a mindset. However, on the flip side, there is also a massive economic problem that less people poses on our society. Like I said before, when you have more people, you need more jobs. On the flip side though, if you have a lot less people, you have a lot less jobs. And what this ultimately means is that companies are going to get a lot less money because as people are working less, there is less money to go around. Now that could actually create a deflationary economy and we'll get into that in just a second. And it also could create a shrinking economy. As people work, they get paid for their work and then they take that money from their job and they go out and spend it. This is on a variety of different things, but ultimately that money gets spent in one way or another. Businesses eventually get this money back so they can pay their employees. That is a very simplified version about how our economy works, but it shows that money is constantly being circulated throughout our society. Money is changing hands so that it can be used. That is the purpose of money. If you really think about it, money doesn't really have any inherent value. The reason money has value is because we say it has value. So in short, having more people on the planet means that there will be more people employed, which means more money circulating throughout our economy. And that means more money will need to be printed. And basic economics will show you that as a country prints more money, are actually starting to do better. Now, in recent months in 2021, there has been a lot of discussion about the United States debt. The United States has around $29 trillion in debt and that can't possibly be a good thing. Well, some economists believe that national debt can actually be a good thing. And the reason for this is because when a country is printing so much money and they're taking on more debt, that means the country in general is growing. I mean, a country doesn't just print money for no reason. They print money in order to buy things and in order to fund more programs. And if a nation is needing a lot more money, then that could mean one of two things. You have high inflation or you have a society that is starting to need more money because there's more jobs or because because the labor force needs higher wages. So if people are working more and our country has a lot more things, then you will start to see more money circulating throughout our economy, which means businesses can grow even larger. But if people have less kids, all of that starts to shrink. Now it doesn't shrink overnight, but it starts to shrink over time. And the question that we have to ask ourselves now is why exactly are people choosing to have less children? Well, this is a very complicated answer, but I think our society is changing the way that we think about families and what is most important to us. I think nowadays the most important thing to a lot of people is their career or their social life, or maybe they want to go out and travel. I know a ton of millennials just myself that this is a bigger priority to them. They don't want to have kids because children a lot of the times are a financial responsibility and some people just don't have the finances for it and that is totally okay. However, if this continues, the United States will start to lose people faster than we are making them. And in the long term, you have to really think about what people do with money here. So. If we have a large group of people, if we have larger families, that means finances for families can continue for generations. Billionaires that have money, if they manage their finances right, can send that money down the ladder. They can continue to have billions of dollars for generation after generation. However, if a billionaire decides not to have kids, well, eventually, that money is going to go away. It's not going to go to that family anymore and it's going to be redistributed throughout the country. If there isn't a place for that money to go, then it's going to go anywhere. However, if we continue to have kids and we continue to push a lifestyle that isn't just working for a living, it's actually having a job that you're passionate about, well, 
that means you're going to see a lot of jobs start to disappear. But you may also start to see a workforce that is actually happy with the career that they've chosen, not just a job. That career could pay them to the point where they're investing a ton of money and they're becoming very wealthy, which means they can pass that wealth down. So as you have more people in your society, there is a potential that you could have a wealthier civilization. So like I said, there are potential benefits to both situations. Obviously, if you have less people on the planet, the people that live on that planet can always make more children. However, if you have less people overall, then there are fewer chances to have children to grow the actual population. That simple fact alone can have massive cultural and financial implications for the entire world. I honestly don't know the answer here, but I think like most things, the answer is somewhere in the middle. Obviously and very clearly, there are some resources on the planet that are finite. Like I said, coal and fossil fuels and natural gas are all finite. So as we use more of those and have more people, we're eventually going to run out. In addition, there is only so much land throughout the United States. Like we saw in 2020 and in 2021, the housing market exploded. We saw people buying houses at a record rate and it led to supply problems. There just wasn't enough homes on the market. Now granted, we can build more homes. However, that is going to cause a lot of other issues from environmental and just supply and demand issues. People will eventually have to turn away from homes. They'll have to go to apartments. But again, we can only put so many apartment complexes on our planet. It's safe to say that eventually we are going to run out of room to build new things. And that could be a big problem for the world as well. However, I totally understand the other side in saying that with less people comes less innovation. Now that is not an absolute fact, but that can be seen as our society has grown in people, so has the world. I mean, there is a reason why we didn't have all of this technology 500 years ago. There wasn't that many people who were educated who were making a lot of these decisions, but as we have more people, we create innovation, which means more access to education and we have more things that we can do. But I don't think we want to get out of hand and think that innovation has to come from every single person. There's still a lot of people on this planet and that is going to last for a very long time. So what exactly do we do about this possible civilization crumble that Elon Musk thinks is going to happen? Well, governments around the world have started incentivizing people to have more children. They've given them tax incentives. They've given them just direct money or childcare expenses cut off of their traditional monthly payments because they want them to have more kids. Other countries like China though have an overpopulation problem because the country is only so big, there are way too many people within it. They actually decentivize people from having more than one child. But I think mostly it's just an ideological thing. I think everybody in our country and around the world is different and they have different needs and ideas about what the world should look like. And if more people is a part of that new world, then great. However, if it's not, then that's also great. We have to learn to adapt to whatever is coming at us as a society. The world is a big place and I don't have control of everything, so you kind of have to just roll with the punches sometimes. But Elon Musk is saying that, quote, good, smart people are making this mistake. He says that if people don't have more children, civilization is going to crumble. And all he wants people to do is start looking at the data to support why people need to have more children. So obviously do your own research here and do what makes the most sense for you and your family. Don't just listen to Elon Musk and definitely don't just listen to a random dude on the internet. That would be me. But now I wanna hear from you on this issue. What do you think about Elon Musk when he says, Civilization is going to crumble if people don't have more children. Is Elon Musk right here that the world needs more people or do we need less people on our planet? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds and I'll see you all in the next one.